cortical mastectomy cadaver dissection unedited this is a left side wet temporal bone the periosteum and the soft tissue over the mastoid cortex is now been clear the periosteum and the soft tissue over the supra mastoid crest is cleared The firm attachment of the sternocleidoid muscle fibers from the mastoid tip is now been cleared. The next step will be is to identify the McEwen's triangle. and the first cut is made horizontal to the supra mastoid crest we use approximately 5 to 6 mm cutting bar in this case we are using a conical bar and the second cut is made along the tangent of the posterior canal wall also observe the uh, fossa mastoidea and the henley spine and the second cut has been made and now we have to join the vertical cut and the horizontal cut and this marks approximately the mckeven triangle The cortical bone is quite soft in a cellular mastoid and it is very hard in a sclerotic mastoid. and now the island of bone in between is drilled out the mastoid cortex is now been drilled the antrum lies approximately 1.25 cm to 1.5 cm medial to the mckeven triangle Gradually, the mastoid cortex is deepened. Gentle saucerization is done.
this is an unedited video this is just for beginners it's very useful to handle the drill Till now we have not identified any landmark. And now we just we are seeing a superficial cell. The posterior canal wall is simultaneously thinned out. And that is working towards the zygoma. You should have a nice quality cutting birds and a good quality suction apparatus for uninterrupted working. Always maintain your suction tips because in between you will have a lot of blockage and a delay in your surgery. A glimpse of the mastered antrum. It is better to work superiorly than inferiorly to avoid injury to the lateral semicircular canal and the facial nerve. And now you can see beautifully the mastoid antrum. Mastoid antrum is the most constant arcel of the mastoid cortex. You can visualize the middle ear and the antrum simultaneously. Thinning of the posterior canal wall. And now you can see beautifully the dome of the lateral semicircular canal which is our first landmark. Once you reach that level you work or use a smaller drill work on the editors superiorly the bone work is done to drill can have a beautiful view of the editors and now the view of the incus shot of the incus is coming into view be very gentle not to touch the ossicles 
or to disturb the ossicles. The tegment cells, small tegment cells are now being drilled out, which forms the superior boundary of the editus. So now you are able to identify the lateral semicircular canal. Now drilling is proceeded inferiorly to identify the digastric ridge One has to be very careful when you suspect a high jugular bulb. While working uh, for the digastric. Also be aware of a forward or anteriorly placed sigmoid sinus which can cause problems. This is a cellular mastoid. Adequate washing is given to clear the bone dust. Drilling of the tip. We are able to visualize the tip cells. And now you can see the uh, sinus plate and the peri labyrinthine nacelles. 
still we have got plenty of tip cells. Now the retro labyrinthine group of fat cells. Retro facial group of fat cells. I am switching over to the smaller size burbit. And these are the peri labyrinthine group of parcels and the retro labyrinthine uh, and the retro facial group of parcels. Still working on the tip cells to identify the digastric ridge. We are seeing the inferior most part of the mastoid cavity. Always there is a cell medial to the digastric ridge and lateral to the digastric ridge. The part which you are seeing superior is the inferior part of the uh, mastoid and the tip is facing upwards. Again please understand this is an unedited video for the benefit of the youngsters. And now we are just able to visualize the digastric muscle along with the digastric tendon anteriorly pointing towards the vertical part of the facial nerve.
Now the diagnostic ridge is very clear and you can see this sinus plate that is the bone adjoining the uh, sigmoid sinus. You can see the uh, antrum, the aditus, posterior canal wall, middle ear with the nalius and the cauda tympani. Still the perilabyrinthine cells are not completely cleared but the rest of the cells has been cleared. There are still some cells left in the uh, tegmen group of cells and the synodural group of fat cells. Here I am using a conical burr to sauzerize the mastoid cavity. to make the edge bevel And I'm using a diamond burr to polish the wall of the uh, sinus plate. Follow cell by cell and you'll not make any mistake. Always go from one landmark to the other landmark. Now the small cells or the tegment plate is now cleared. That is the tegment entry. Now I am using a small cutting burr to accentuate the small cells.
these are the cells in the sinodural angle. This is a mastoid tip, posterior canal wall, sinus split, very labyrinth. Sinodural angle, dural plate superiorly, caditus, lateral semisolar canal, external rotary canal, handle of malleus, coda tympani, zygoma. Thinning of the posterior canal wall is now carried out. The sinus plate is still thinned out. So after a complete cortical mastodectomy, you should be able to identify the following landmarks. One thing is the sinus plate posteriorly, anteriorly thinned out posterior canal wall, superiorly the uh, tegment plate or the dural plate and then you have to appreciate the uh, tome of the lateral semicircular canal very clearly and then you have to see the short process of the incus in the aditus. Uh, then you have to visualize the aditus completely. Then you have to identify the anterior border of the digastric ridge which points towards the facial nerve. Excentrate all possible aracels. So uh, identify the medial group and lateral group of aracels which lie in between uh, on either side of the digastric ridge. Identify the perilabyrinthine cells. Identify the retro labyrinthine cells. Remove all the tegment group of air cells. Remove completely the sinusoidal angle group of air cells. Still, you can see another cell in the tip. That is the region of the jugular. the depth. Simply follow the cell tract and you will not create any mistake.
Be very careful while walking in this area. The bird should not slip in the depth. If there is a high jugular bulb, we might have problems and very thinned out bone at that place. Cortical mastodectomy is a procedure which is an uh, access for many ear surgeries. Usually you don't eccentrate all the air cells. Depends on the pathology but always try to practice eccentrating all the air cells so that your anatomical knowledge becomes very strong. I am still working on the tip cells, the deepest part. The image is almost upside down due to the rotation of the microscope. Above you are seeing the tip and below you have the tegment plate. Have a fine control with your drill. Still working along the perilabyrinthine cells and the retrolabyrinthine cells. These cells will be completely eccentrated during our labyrinthine exposure. That is the sinodural angle. That is a tip cells. Anterior border of the diagnostic pointing towards the vertical part of the facial nerve. The sinus plate lying posteriorly, anteriorly the uh, posterior canal wall. Thanks for watching. We will continue the next exercise shortly.